Shabbat Shalom. We are emerging from the lowest point in our Jewish calendar. As last week we observed Tisha B'Av, the Jewish day of communal mourning and grief. Today is Tu B'Av, a Jewish holiday. Not much observed here stateside, but it's like the Hebrew calendar's version of Valentine's Day. This Shabbat is a special one called Shabbat Nachamu. Nachamu means be comforted, take comfort. So it is a Shabbat of comfort and love. Sounds pretty good, right? Who of us couldn't use a little more comfort and love? Yet we rarely give ourselves the love and nurturing that we need. Rabbi Akiva, considered the greatest sage from the Mishnah, explained that the, that the verse, love your neighbor, that is, love your fellow human being, as yourself, is the greatest principle of all of Torah. And yet, if we treat others with the kind of love that we give to ourselves, would that be a good or a bad thing? Do we love ourselves well? For most of us, the answer is mixed. While we might make efforts to improve ourselves, we can still be quite self-critical and unkind to ourselves, especially when we make mistakes or feel embarrassed. And this, it turns out, is hardwired. Evolutionary psychologists have learned that we all have a negativity bias. Negative experiences actually leave a stronger imprint on us than positive ones. As a species, we focus on our flaws and shortcomings in order to survive. Furthermore, we have an innate sense of competition with others, which is also likely a protective mechanism, a survival mechanism. So we can find ourselves at times getting stuck in negative feedback loops in which we find ourselves lacking, fixate on our errors, as we are hardwired to do, compare ourselves with others, and feel a sense of inadequacy. We are commanded to love others as we love ourselves. But can we also love ourselves the way we love others? Can we still be open to loving and nurturing ourselves when we feel we are missing the mark? Reb Nachman of Breslov said, a person must judge themselves favorably and find something good. This goodness gives them strength. So Reb Nachman's teaching is one of empowerment. It is a Jewish value to judge others favorably, to judge others with the assumption that they are people of merit. So why can't we do the same for ourselves? We are no more or less human than anyone else. We all make mistakes. We all fail. It is a part of learning and growing and being alive. That is why in just five weeks from now, when we start the high holy day season with Slichot, and we recite the confessional prayers, we ask for forgiveness as a group, all of us together. We all have failings. We all feel inadequate at times. We all have parts of ourselves that we wish were different. And we all deserve compassion anyway because this is the human condition. We are imperfect beings born into an imperfect world, and the best we can do is keep trying. We can try to be kind to ourselves as we put one foot in front of the other. We can look at our feelings with a sense of non-judgmental curiosity. Huh, I really bombed that. That was pretty awful. I wonder what led me to make that decision. I wonder how I can try something different next time. And this kind of work 
of nurturing self-compassion in a non-judgmental way is the kind of self-love that is ultimately holy work. Because when we love ourselves well, we are better able to love others well and to feel the holy line of connection between me and you and that who is beyond us, the Holy One. This week, our Torah portion has the words of the beginning of the Ve'ahavta prayer. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol levavecha uvechol nafshecha Uvechol meodecha You shall love Adonai, your God, with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your spirit. Loving God completes the circle from self to other to God and back again. As Jews, we know that love is expressed through action. Being commanded to love in the Ve'ahavta prayer is not really about being commanded to feel love. Rather, we are being asked to act in a loving way and to do so with every kernel of our being. Loving God means acting in a loving way towards God's creations, including ourselves. Interestingly, the beginning of the Ve'ahavta, Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, can be translated slightly differently. Instead of, you shall love Adonai your God, it can be translated to read, you shall love with Adonai your God. And this reveals a spiritual teaching. When we love, God is with us. Shabbat shalom.